Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Boombadog here with Max Frames. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually showing a, uh, a video. I did the work earlier, uh, so I'll be kind of narrating over this, but uh, you know, I've seen a lot of videos out where people have been painting their graphics card covers and, and everything else. A lot of times they don't do the fans. I do in this one. Um, this is actually for the GTX 970. Uh, I've got two of the EVGA uh, super clocked editions in my current build. And, uh, you know, my build, I, I named it Altair, and my build is supposed to be, um, you know, white, black, and red, and obviously uh, this doesn't go with the color scheme. So uh, right here, all I'm doing is I'm just showing how easy it was to actually pop this out. Now, obviously, you know, every, uh, every build's a little bit different, um, or deconstruct is a little bit different. On this one, it was actually fairly simple. Four screws on the, on the back uh, plate of the graphics card itself. Then there were four uh, smaller screws that I just showed you the screwdriver I used for it uh, on the heatsink itself. And then three screws per fan. Uh, I used a small screwdriver and then on top of that I used a magnetic screwdriver just to kind of retrieve them so I didn't drop them into all the parts. Uh, you know, I did record sound while I was doing it, but uh, I have a tendency to curse a lot so I wanted to uh, re-record and kind of take that out a bit. Uh, right now I'm showing the coffee filter that I used. Um, I'm also wearing gloves now. It's on a static pad and uh, I've got the strap on uh, in order to keep there from being any static discharge. Uh, but uh, I still wore the gloves because after I used the uh, isopropyl alcohol to to uh, clean the cover itself, I didn't want to put more fingerprints back on it. Later you'll see me without the gloves because at that point I just said fuck it and I took the gloves off because uh, it was getting in the way of everything and I was simply like, well, if a fingerprint gets painted in, it gets painted in, but it's really not as sensitive as you'll see. Um, here I'm basically showing how I have it, uh, how I have the graphics card set down at an angle to where it's not affecting any of the components. Um, it's got a pretty badass heat sink on it uh, as well for this EVGA uh, type. It's got some uh, nice pipes coming off the side, but um, what's really cool about this one, and, and you can see the stickers there. Now, I thought they were stickers. This ended up being pretty fucking embarrassing, to be perfectly honest, because uh, these are the first graphics cards that I've really gone um, in depth into painting, and, and there's still a lot of work to be done, but uh, it's like 37 degrees out, uh, and I almost passed out uh, attempting to uh, paint these in the house with the windows open and fans blowing, and uh, I'm pretty sure my dog's got a contact high. So, um, but anyway, uh, so when I have more time, I'll be going back and detailing it quite a bit more. But uh, I attempted to use a flathead to get up underneath these because they're stickers, or so I thought. Instead, it was the film layer that I had never taken off to begin with, uh, the scratch-resistant film layer. And then they actually were the, uh, the kind of harder, um, you know, like a light, very light metal um, type of thing. And I bent the first one to shit. Uh, the second one came off a lot smoother, so I could have reused it, but I didn't want to use it anyway. Um, right here, you kind of see an idea of what paints I'm using. A lot of people use Plasti Dip, and Plasti Dip is very, very good. Um, at the same time, it hasn't really been tested at high temperatures for a long time. Now, it's good for 200 degrees Fahrenheit, but, um, you know, and your card would have to be something like 98 degrees Celsius, like nonstop for that to be an issue, but... Uh, uh, you know, every place that I went, I simply could not find Plasti Dip in colors. Um, I found it in black and found it in matte white. I did not find the gloss coating anywhere. And uh, so those were just my local areas. I went to auto parts stores. I went to Walmart. I went to Home Depot. And they all kind of had their own sort of Plasti Dip knockoff. But it basically said temporary dip that was supposed to go on and then be peeled off within three months. So what I did instead was I went with Rust-Oleum's um, plastic, uh, plastic bond is essentially what it is. Now right here you'll see, I have a tendency, I I'm actually a little bit colorblind, so I went to the store and bought what looked like red to me, but instead was more of like a rust, uh, they called it paprika, uh, and I didn't, I didn't mean I didn't pay attention. So I've got obviously a matte white there, as well as a clear coat to the left. Um, and uh, then my rust color. So I go back later to the store, and uh, and that's when I uh, take my wife with me because she has the uh, the ability to uh, see color where I can't. Uh, so she helped me pick out a good red. Um, the great thing about this is that a lot of times you have to you have to do a lot of coats on these things in order to make them scratch resistant or to be able to handle them without you know smudging something. And uh, where I can say that there were certain areas where where I did that. A lot of it's got to do with the fact that it did have to kind of dry outside 
um, in colder temperatures. Uh, that's not necessarily recommended. Uh, later on, I actually put it in the bathroom, uh, crank the heat up in the house, and shut the door and just kind of let... All right, so anyway, I jump ahead in the video a little bit here, and you can actually see that I've removed the fans, uh, which was actually incredibly simple when it came to... Uh, uh, to this. I've seen them in the past where they've been a bit of a pain in the ass, but uh, it's just three screws and then you uh, detach the uh, uh, the connector uh, that holds both fans together and then you just slip the puppies out. I've got a special idea in mind for those, which I didn't have at the beginning of the build. Um, but what I was saying about the paint that's so great is that a lot of times you have to apply a layer and then you gotta wait for a while and then you know you come back and apply the layer. What you actually do is you spray these from about 10 inches away um, you could go a little bit closer, but just be careful of overspray. Um, it bond, bonds incredibly well with this with this plastic material. Um, I can only speak for this, but uh, for this specific card, um, you know, but the plastic that was on it is just kind of your standard plastic. So anyway, it bonds very, very well. What you do is you spray a layer. You wait about two minutes. You spray it a second time. You wait about two minutes. You spray it a third time, making sure that, you know, you really get rid of the darks, especially because it is black plastic. Uh, the white going on did a really, really, really good job. Um, and then I set it to the side. Uh, I give it about 30 minutes worth of dry time. I came back. I hit it with another coat. Uh, which technically would have been my second pause coat, but in actuality, the fourth coat, coat total. Uh, let it sit for about an hour and a half, came back, and this thing was handle ready. Okay, I'm talking handle ready. So it was good to go. Um, you see you see, I masked off the areas. In the future, I'll probably be a little more ambitious with it, but um, a lot of people have experience in detailing and things like that, and I don't. Now here's what I do with the fans. Um, I actually taped off the fans uh, about halfway down because I wanted to... Uh, to actually change the color of the blades. Um, I'm a World War II history buff. My degrees are in military history. And uh, so, you know, what I wanted to do is I kind of had this like propeller idea in mind. Now, I don't know if you could see it in the video. It's a little dark, um, but I actually cut like a swirl pattern in. Um, again, I don't have the steadiest of hands, so my swirl patterns are not exactly the same. And they end up looking a bit wh whimsical, but I was okay with that. Uh, I still cannot remember the movie, but the one with Jack Frost, you know, the, the little skeleton Christmas Christmas movie. It kind of looks like a lot of the patterns that you see in that, um, but to me it looked like the pattern on like the you know the end of the nose of a of a P fifty one or a you know uh, you know one of the uh, the many uh, fighters that we use during World War Two and and that's kind of what I was going for, but more which is kind of a black and white theme and you'll see that later. Uh, so next should be on to the painting. <coughs> All right, so here I jump ahead, basically. Um, this is about an hour and a half after the original. Now, that's with uh, four coats sprayed, but again, uh, three were in quick succession, um, roughly three minutes apart on each coat, and then waited 20 minutes and applied a second coat uh, to kind of hit some areas that I thought I needed to go back on. Um, there were still some areas that I think I could have hit, but they were going to be on the inside and non-viewable. Um, you know, builds for customers and things like that I would have gone through and... And, and obviously made sure to hit them all as, as well as to check, you know, more in depth for overspray. But, uh, you know, in this situation, it wasn't really as big. But, um, uh, and then there are the fans also in the background. And look, hey, the red, the new red, not rust, but red that I went and picked up. Uh, these things are great, too. 350 from Home Depot, at least in my area. So, I mean, you really can't beat it. And it's going to last you several, uh, several builds. All right, so now we're back in the bedroom, and this is the build. Uh, Altair is his name. That's a uh, Cooler Master Storm Striker uh, that we got it in. Last time I worked a little bit on cable management. I'll be doing some sleeving soon. Uh, you've seen it before. That's the uh, NZXT Kraken uh, in there uh, that's cooling the CPU. Uh, still got to do some things to that, and I've got modifications that I'll be doing uh, also coming up. Here's the other uh, GTX 970 in there. That's what it obviously started looking like, and... Uh, you know, I, I did notice um, some areas I'd like to, to make some improvements on that I'll be going back and doing with this one. But uh, eventually here, I think I pan down at some point and actually show off the card before it goes in. Uh, hey, there it is. That's right. Um, so I do notice in, in like one or two little areas, maybe three, uh, some smudging that I don't really like. Um, hey, happy fan. But there's some smudging that I don't really like. Uh, like in the corner there, I don't know if you could see at the top left of the red, um, and those areas actually do go back and uh, and fix. I just apply a very tiny amount of. Um, you can actually use isopropyl alcohol on that as well, but you can use a tiny amount just to kind of clean it up a bit, and then uh, you can reapply in a small amount. But uh, 
Um, I don't know when I do the next one. I may I may respray just to make it a little bit darker or not. We'll just kind of I'll just kind of see how it looks together once it's in the case. Um, so yeah. All right. So now what we can do is we can actually see the card in there with the fans spinning. That's right. We got those puppies uh, uh, revved up. Um, I think you could probably see the little smudge there. I'll set the lines. So I'll definitely be going back and actually uh, actually working on that. And that just comes from overspray. And that's, again, where I try to emphasize that you want to be back far enough. If you can kind of see, um, these, these cards are kind of weird because they do have a bit of a thicker groove than I'm used to. And you'll see me spaz out right here, and I do apologize. That's more like, uh, I think my dog was looking at me, and I was trying to get into the computer. So, um... Uh, I'm talking about you know how what I'm gonna do in terms of uh, sleeving the cables and uh, maybe doing a special project with that NZXT. Uh, but obviously you can see the white in there with the red. Um, what I'd really like to do actually is um, is maybe get up behind that, maybe actually cut out that red section, get up behind it, uh, replace it with kind of like a little bit of um kind of like a black plexi, and then actually throw uh, throw a couple little red LEDs. Uh, at, odd, at odd angles in there just to kind of just kind of have more of a red hue pop out instead of the red paint itself um, I'm always trying to think of new ways to do things as well as new ways to liquid cool and and everything else and I'll have a pretty pretty awesome upcoming video on how you can liquid cool your system uh, affordably and make it look super awesome um, I think the card looks really good in there obviously once uh, once I've got the um, the motherboard armor that I put on because that's a uh, Formula 5 Asus but once I have the motherboard armor on there and I spray that as well, kind of give it a gloss coat, everything will really start come to get, coming together in terms of the white, red, and black. Um, but, you know, that's that's the best part of building these things is, you know, you're never quite done. And even when you think you're done, you just aren't. So, you know, there are areas that I need to go back and fix on the card itself. But uh, I'll tell you, paint-wise, uh, this stuff sticks. And I didn't have any problems. And with my big-ass hands you're not going to have any problems. So definitely get to it, get modding, and uh, yo, this is Max Frames.